Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my flooring trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install your own laminate flooring. The tools and products you're going to require are laminate flooring, handsaw, set square, moist detector, rubber mallet, claw hammer, a tape measure and pencil, pulling bar, spacers, tapping block, spirit level, underlay and duct tape. But the first thing you're going to need to do is prepare your floor surface. Start by hoovering the area to remove any debris, making sure it's clean and dust free. Also check closely that there's no screws standing proud if it's a wooden floor. Make sure that the subfloor you're laying onto meets the humidity requirements advised by the manufacturer's instructions. Finally, place your spill level around all areas of your floor to check to see if it's as level as possible, with no more than a 3mm height variation over 1m in length. So now the floor has been cleaned and it's safe to lay on, I'm going to start to roll out my underlay. Now this particular one I'm using, as you can see, it's the silver side one, it's 2mm thick, and it has a membrane underneath to stop any damp actually penetrating through. So I'm just going to place it over here. You always make sure that the coloured side is down. You can get a gold one, you can get a silver one. So I'm just going to take them edges along here. And stop it rolling back on me. And button it up almost to the actual skating board around this area. bits of tape on there, hold it into place. Once the board is laid on top of it, of course, the weight of that will keep it down. Take it all the way to the end, and then you can either use a pair of scissors or a trimming knife to cut it snug into the skating board. Again, I'll tape down these edges on here. You want to try to pull it not too tight so it stretches it, but of course you don't want to have any waves in it too much. So again, flush to the skirt on this side and button up the edges. I don't want to mount it over there and create a bit of a, a hump of any sort. So I'm just going to put a spot of tape on there for now to hold it into position. And once I've got this piece rolled out and cut, I will then put a continuous line of tape all the way down. For your last piece of underlay, repeat the process. Put it tight up to the skating board, trim it down to size and run a continuous piece of duct tape where the two edges meet. Now you have got a number of different choices when it comes to actually underlay. Here's just a small example. You have a 2mm clear one, which is designed with no membrane on. You've also got a 2mm one with a silver foil on the back which has a membrane, which is going to help with any moist that may be in the ground. And then you have the gold one, which is a little bit thicker, that's three millimetres, and that also has the membrane on there. This helps if there's a few more little blemishes in the floor that just needs riding out, you have a thicker underlay. Now setting out where you place your first laminate board is quite important because that dictates where the rest of them are going to go. I've only got a small area here that I'm going to cover. Your room at home may be bigger, of course, so you'll have to take your own measurements. But a normal starting point, you would start in the one corner. You can trim off the little small edgings on there, and it can almost go butt up into the corner, leaving the 10 mil expansion gap. But we'll go into the expansion gaps later. Then you would put your second plank, of course, clicking into position. And if your room at home is bigger, so on with your third, fourth, and fifth board. And then when you come to the end wall, you're going to have to make a cut on one of the planks. Now, as long as that last piece exceeds 200 millimetres, that complies to the manufacturer's recommendations on there. So, you could have a cut off maybe half here, and that's all fine. The off cut of this one doesn't go to waste. That then gets brought down this end, and it becomes your start plank for your second row. Now, this could be about here. And then, of course, you will continue them on. By doing it that way, your joints are going to be relatively sporadic over there, which is fine. The floor's still as strong as it would be. However, 
I'm going to show you a different way of laying mine because I have only got a small area here to cover. First of all, I'm going to find the centre of my room here. So I know my overall area across. I'm going to put a little mark here at 1220 millimetres. There we go. That's my centre point. Now I could start one here and click to connect one here. So my joint is spot on in the centre of my room, which would allow me a small cut off either end of there, only very small, a couple of inches, which would just be waste, of course. Then my second row of boards, I would take a plank, I would aim to get this plank here exactly in the centre of there. So I do that by measuring this plank, which is 12, 1290 millimetres, which takes me 640 five quick little mark there I'm going to offer that up so it is in the center of the room which then gives me my sizes for my first cut here because remember we're always working from one corner across that way as we're laying so my cut here super exceeds the 200 mil recommendation so that's fine it's actually going to be 580 and of course we'll allow for the 10 mil gaps the off cut of that will actually be big enough for my end here, again with a small little bit and a cut waist off. By me setting it out like this in a very small area makes it more economical on the actual wastage itself. But of course you at home, depending on what size room you have, you'll have to do your calculations yourself. But whether you're keeping all your joints symmetric like this to make it look aesthetic or you're staggering them like the first alternative I mentioned with the off cut at that end brought down here to start this second row as long as it exceeds 200 millimetres. Once you're satisfied with the layout of the width of your room and the size cut you're going to have, then you've got to work out the actual length as well. I'm okay to start here with a full board, but you must work out when you go the full length of yours, the end cut must be more than 50 millimetres. Again, it's a manufacturer's recommendation. The way mine works out, I'm going to have eight full boards and then my cut, I'm looking at around about 70 to 100 millimetres. And of course, I'll take off the expansion gap on both ends. Your planks are easy to cut with a handsaw, but if you prefer to use power tools like a circular saw or a chop saw, it will make the installation quicker. Now I've got a couple of off cuts of the laminate floor in here and I just want to show you closely how the click system works. This board, a full length of course, is laid flat on the floor. The second piece is interlocked in about 20-30 degrees and simply wobbled and clicked down, gentle tap either side and it pulls that joint together perfectly. So this will now be my first piece with my 10 millimeter expansion gap there and at the back and then the same again to cut this piece. Less 10 millimeters, just 12, 15. This is a click system. So once I click them into position and lock them down straight away with a little tap, they're connected. I'm just going to make sure I've got my expansion gap either end and along the back. And then place my wedges into position. These wedges can be adjusted when they're slid up and down if you have some discrepancies in your wall or your skating board sometimes the room that you're laying in may not have the skating board in place and your plasterboard might have a little bow in it these can be adjusted to get your gaps that is required so the cut that i put in for the second row is placed in here the off cut of it will do the opposite end However, I'll place this in position first into the click system method. It just slides in position about 20 or 30 degrees, butts up to this end piece. You lie it down, 
one gentle tap and then you can use your tap and block to place just over the edge and gently tap which leaves me now with my off cut off there that click will connect into there it needs trimming off that end so I'll take my measurements from here five six five so again I measure it from the click edge five six five onto here place it in offer it up just butt it up to the last plank Gentle tap into position, and it's perfect. Gentle tap with my tap and block. You can place your pulling bar on the one edge that's cut, place it on so it hooks into position, and then give that a gentle little tap. And it completely clicks together. So that's my first two rows now in position. My third row is going to be exactly the same as my first row and so on with the second row will be the same as the fourth row. Now one thing to bear in mind when you're opening your packs and you're starting to lay down your floor is to have a close look because every now and again you might get a repeated pattern in the actual planks. Now this varies in different manufacturers, different type of packs and flooring but it's just one thing to bear in mind when you're laying them. What you don't want to do is actually put two of the same right together. So there's an example there now. Them two panels are literally exactly the same. So have a good sieve through. This can vary in different manufacturers, different size packs, etc. And if you do happen to come across two of the same, just simply space them out in different areas of your floor. Laminate flooring really is a quick and easy way to change the look and feel of almost any room. Please do check the full manufacturer's guidelines before attempting your installation as some flooring products may require slightly different specifications. Okay, so now I'm ready to lay my last row of planks. However, it's not the full width of a plank. So I'm gonna take some measurements on here and I've got about, yeah, about 80 odd millimeters. So I'm gonna cut, get my planks, cut them down to about 70 millimeters, leaving my 10 millimeter expansion gap, and then they can be interlocked in and pulled into place. So now these are cut down on the width side. I can place them into the click system. A little gentle tap, hammer down, and then I get my pulling bar, hook that on the back in the 10 millimeter gap that I've left for the expansion joint, and just give that gentle little tap same again with the middle plank and the very last piece. And that's my final plank now installed on my laminate floor. So all that's left to do now is remove the actual spaces and cover your 10 millimeter expansion gap. And you can do that with a Scotia bead. Really simple and quick to fit it goes over the actual gap, it's fixed to the skirting board and that allows the floor to actually move if it needs to. So that's my floor now complete. Hopefully I've inspired you to install your own laminate flooring. But if you're looking for more inspiration or want to see some how-to videos or just want to know about the products, why not visit the website flooringmountain.co.uk.